Hello everybody and welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today we're going to be showing you how to optimise all the space in your Type 25, T3 or Vanagon using the camper van culture storage bags for your sliding door, your kick panel on your rock and roll bed and the tailgate. So if you own a camper van, or more specifically a T3, T25 or Vanagon, you know that they're not the biggest vehicle, space is at a premium, but I'm here today to show you these amazing products which will enable you to fit more in your van and utilise literally every square inch of your van. What we have in front of us then is the brand new cargo bag range from campervanculture.com. My friend over at Campervan Culture, Jed, has generously given us the, basically the prototypes. These are gonna be on sale effectively immediately from when you watch this video. But these ones in particular are the prototypes, but very, very, very close to the finished product. And what we've got here are three bags or three of these uh, storage systems that are available for the sliding door, the kick panel on your rock and roll bed, and the tailgate. And they're a fabric-based cargo solution um, which have built-in pockets stitched into them so you can carry small items, annoying items, maybe chargers, um, cleaning products, pajamas, socks, underwear, you know, all sorts of things that you may not want in a big bag or you may just want tucked away. There's even phone pockets and all sorts of things in these. So let's get straight into them and show you what we've got. The first on offer then is the kickboard bag. It's actually designed for a Westphalia, but it's a pretty universal solution for most three quarter width beds probably across the range, T4, T5, T25, this is probably gonna be a universal kit. However, we've got the cutouts here and here that are designed for the Westphalia. This is actually gonna work out really well in my van because I've got a heater outlet in the front of my bed and I've got some uh, 240 volt and 12 volt sockets that I need to find homes for as well. I'm actually gonna be reorganizing the kick panel, remaking it in my bag. Um, and it's a very simple solution to attach it. What we have on the back, is a large Velcro strip. And then what you get in the kit is a self-adhesive Velcro strip. So as long as you clean um, the area where you need to put your Velcro strip onto, literally peel the backing and put it on. The one I have today isn't actually a self-adhesive backing. Like I said before, these are like kind of prototypey, but very, very, very close to the finished item. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six bags. Now. Personally, for me, these are going to be great for my kids when traveling because they're both on the back um, seat and they can store water bottles, they can store food, maybe their tablets and phones, games, things like that. Because when you're traveling in the back, if you have stuff on the side, on your interior, when you're going around corners, things can slide off the doors, uh, sorry, slide off the worktop. So having these solutions with all of these little pockets are actually going to be great. So that is the first bag. Really, really excited to show you how to fit it. Let's move on to the next one. The second bag we are showing you today, and my personal favorite, is the sliding door cargo bag. Now, you may have seen on a previous video, we had a T5 uh, solution cargo bag. Um, for the back doors, uh, be it tailgate or barn doors. This one here, the bags are not external like the kickboard one. The actual storage items themselves are in the back and they utilize the interior voids in the sliding door to be able to fit your stuff in. And the reason for that is when you open the sliding door, there's very, very little gap between the side of the door and the actual body of the vehicle itself. So when it's mounted in the door, it's completely flush. And in this one in particular, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pockets, all of varying sizes. Now I've been trying to think of what I'd be putting in here when this is actually fitted. 
And I think things like your smalls or maybe clothing, because if you're getting changed in the vehicle, normally you're gonna have um, the door shut. You can maybe even put swimming gear in here. So when the door's shut, your curtains are closed, you wanna get them changed. You could have a door pocket for your uh, boxer shorts, underwear. You could have one for your socks, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, but also maybe some bedding your pyjamas, stuff like that. Lots of things you could put in here, but there's even some smaller pockets, which if you, if we flip it over again, these are actually smaller in depth because of the structure of the inside of the door. Um, you could put maybe a small wallet in there, maybe a phone at night, some charging cables, all sorts of little things that you know you only need when the sliding door shut. The way this is attached to the van then is through these eyelets, the, these go into the original trim holes of the door. And what we're gonna be using are the supplied push fit trim clips. Uh, these come with the kit, they're in black, and they will match the stitching on the side of the bag. And they also have some self-adhesive components, sorry, self Velcro and self-adhesive components on as well. So what we'll do, when we come to fit it, is we remove the Velcro items. Ugh. We'll stick them onto the door where they match up with these parts. This bit in particular is round the sliding door handle and lock mechanism. And then on the backs of the pockets, so your pockets don't droop within the inside of the door, there's these Velcro parts that are self-adhesive self to the back of your door. These stick onto the internals, uh, the internal metalwork of the door, and then you can Velcro them on and off. And this is really cool. So if you don't want to use the bag at any stage, you can just peel the Velcro off, undo the poppers, put your normal door card in there. Uh, but I don't see why you would ever need to remove this, but it's a really good solution. Self-adhesive Velcro strips, put them into the door, and then they hold them securely. It's a really, really nice product. Uh, they're made of this strong canvas material. This is actually pop-top fabric material as well. Um, so you know it's hard wearing. I can't remember if it's waterproof, but I think it is. Um, so any spills and things, you should be able to just get off. These are a little bit grubby because I've been playing around with them already. Um, but as a product, absolutely fantastic. And I cannot wait to show you them in the van. Last but not least then is the tailgate bag for the Type 25 T3 Vanagon. Works in exactly the same manner as the sliding door pocket, sliding door cargo bag, in that the pockets themselves are internal and they use the cavity of the door to be able to uh, create that pocket of space to put your bits and pieces in. And again, you might be wondering what you might put in there. For a start, nothing's too heavy, otherwise you're gonna need to um, replace the rear struts on the back. However, camper van culture do sell those as well. And I can leave links to those struts and everything else you see in this video down in the description. And yes, attached by a series of poppers and the self-adhesive strips again. And again, what can I put in that when it's in my tailgate? Well, actually, if you've got your bed in the back, you might wanna put some, an extra blanket in there. Again, maybe your pajamas, some smalls, or, if you um, have some breakdown gear maybe, you could put maybe a toe strap in there, um, some jump leads, maybe a small tool pouch, anything like that is gonna be perfect for storing in these big bags. Now, all I have in here is actually dodo mat wadding just to um, fill them out a bit so they look good on camera, but what a fantastic solution. I can't wait to show you how to put those ones in also. So what we're gonna do get ourselves set up in the van. Let's show you how to fit these. So welcome to the inside of my personal van, Bully. As a bit of a backstory, I built this van 12, 13 years ago, self-built all the interior. It was my first foray into actually building a custom interior for my own needs. Those needs have now changed, so I will be changing this whole format. I've got a new Rusty Lee bed to go in here, and as a result, I'm gonna be changing this kick panel. But for today, I have the kick panel cargo bag, which is designed for a Westphalia, hence the cutout. But as it turns out, it fits absolutely perfectly, I mean perfectly, on my bed, which is brilliant. So ignore, the speakers, the heater outlet, 
and this uh, socket outlet as well. That will all be changed, but for the time being, what I'm gonna do is fit this just so I can show you. As mentioned earlier, this is a prototype bag. It has been fitted to another vehicle already, so I don't have the self-adhesive Velcro. Um, when you get your kit, it will be a self-adhesive, or a Velcro with a uh, double-sided self-adhesive tape on it. So what I'm gonna do right now, just for the purpose of this video, is actually set this up on here. I'm gonna use a bit of spray adhesive, high temp spray adhesive. So if you give me a couple of minutes, I'm gonna go and mask off the area. We can put the spray adhesive on, put this Velcro on, and fit the bag. So when it comes to it then, that process will be a lot easier for you than what I've just had. And then it's gonna be a case simply of making sure the bag is lined up. Applying the Velcro down. Still can't believe how well this fits on this vehicle. And there we have it. Once again, ignore my current setup with the speakers, that's all getting changed. And if I remove that wadding, let's take a look in there. You've got some huge, huge spaces. Again, it has the cutouts. What I'm gonna be doing with these cutouts is actually putting my, in fact, my heater outlet's nearly there anyway. So I'm gonna be putting my heater outlet more in the center, and then I'm gonna be using this area here for a couple of 240 volt outlets, or I might even put my outlets down here as well. It's all, anything's a possibility with this. Um, but yeah, as far as a product goes, that is really, really cool. Really, really handy. And if I was to sit in the vehicle, of course I can feel it there because it's cargo bags, but that is not in the way. That is not in the way of, of this at all. Um, really handy for just stuff, say, even cooking utility items, um, stuff you want to just grab in and out, stuff like that. It's it's absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Cannot wait to actually put this into effect and figuring out what I'm going to be putting in this as a, on a day-to-day -day basis. But straight off the bat, you know, my girls can store their tablets in there, all of their charging bits, some teddies, whatever it might be. Nice one, Jed from Campervan Culture. Really cool piece of kit. On to the sliding door then. My favorite one of all. Look at that, that's gonna be really cool. So what I've got here is my purple and yellow door. I replaced it because it was a good rust-free example. But what I need to do is remove the door card first. Now yours might be screwed in, it might have trim clips. I have a trim removal tool. In fact, I have two types of trim removal tool. But the first thing we've got to do is uh, remove the handle. Now. Again, depending on your door and how it's been fixed, you should just have a Phillips screwdriver or Phillips screw, cross-headed screw that's holding your handle in there. What I'm gonna do is go round the door now, pull off the door poppers. And with that, oh, I've got some insulation in there as well, so I'll have to remove that. And then we can put the new bag on. Now, point to note, this is an early door, but the bags available are compatible with early or late doors, or at the time of ordering, state whether you have an early or late door. And also available for left and right hand drive as well. So, covers all bases. I'm just gonna have to pop that there so I can get to these poppers down here. There we go. One more. Brilliant. So get that out of the way. As you can see, when I built this, I put some insulation in there. This is something I'm gonna to have to remove. So this is the Dodo Mat Thermo Fleece. And sadly, I will be losing that insulation to create the space. However, if you're stuffing those pockets full of clothes or whatever it may be, well look, the door was originally blue, then red, 
then purple, and now I've painted the outside yellow. Um, so yes, if you're stuffing the door with clothes, then you shouldn't, you know, the door will be insulated to a point anyway. And what I have in here is the Dodo sound deadening and the Thermoliner product, which is the spongy silver line stuff there. So I think what I'll do, I'll remove all of this to remove the glue and the remnants of the thermo fleece. What I'm going to do is maybe get some brake cleaner and Scotch Brite, and then I'll bring you back ready to pop the door up. So you can see now why the design of the bag is the way it is, rather than having one big pocket here and through here, or why these are smaller, etc., etc., is because of the internal structure of the door. You have thinner pockets, so one can fit up here, one can fit down here, and then the smaller pockets are designed to be attached to this point. So I'm going to mock up the bag then. Oops, got a trim clip remaining. I'm going to mock up the bag and just see where it lines up, which is fantastic. Those points are there. I'm going to use the supplied clips, which are these push fit trim clips, and they slot into the existing holes like so. So I'm just going to maybe pop in a couple just to see the lay of the land and see where I can then start peeling the backing off of my um, sections and pockets. There you go, that one's going to go there. Gosh, this is nice. How good does that look already? I've not even really fitted it yet. Right, so there we go. You've got a section that's going to go around the door handle. This little cutout goes around there. We've got holes and we've got the self-adhesive part here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I think, is just start peeling off the tape. I'll do this section at a time, I think, because then I can sort of... No, do you know what I think I'm going to do? Let's start from the bottom, actually. That's probably a better idea, because then I can work my way up and I can view easily where the sections go. So let's just pop one in there, and then I'm going to start attaching the bottom sections. Pop the door open a touch. Get that last one in. Again, I explained before, I have a prototype door. I have a prototype door card. So that one in the end, that's for a late door. So I'm going to leave that for the time being. I shall maybe drill a hole in that one, in that end-to-end -end pocket. Right, so now we've got this section here. I can remove the stuffing. So, my door pocket is in place. I'm just going to put this clip in here. And I'm going to hold that against the door here. Remove this one. Remove that one. And now I know where that strip's going to go. I'm then going to remove the backing off the self-adhesive part. Lay the bag back up in its position. Put a couple of poppers in here. I'm figuring this out with you guys, by the way. So let's get this right together. There we go. Cool. So we know the self adhesive backing's off. Excellent. There we have it. First one down. So I've put the bottom row in, peeled off the backing, held it up against the door, and then put that, stuck it in, I guess. Now you don't have to, but I like to make sure these are all aligned because I'm a little bit anal like that. But what I've done, if you have a quick look at these out, you can see that there's like a line running through. So when they're closed, you can see, gosh, fluff all over my fingers. 
you can see this and this. I like to make sure they're all aligned, be it horizontally or vertically. I like to make sure they're all aligned. In this case, I'm going for horizontally. So there we go. So that one's in, mid rower in. Let's put this one in here as well. Dude, this is cool. Right, on to the next two pockets then. So, let's go for that backing, that backing. I'm gonna pop a couple of poppers in here so I know it's aligned. Okay, you ready? And there we go, self-adhesive. So that's a good thing to point out as well, is the fact that I do have sound deadening and insulation within these doors, and they're still filling up the voids and doing really well there as well. So mid pockets are in, they're nice and stuck up in there, as long as I've got all my wadding out for props. They're all good there. This one doesn't have a self-adhesive point, but still a nice deep pocket in there for like a phone. Now moving on to the top one. One and two. And again, loosely pop in these poppers without going all the way home with them. Keeps the tension in the right place. Shut that, I think, real quick. So now we've got the self-adhesive off the back. Don't. Pull the wadding out. And then I can go ahead and stick those on there. And the actual wire that operates the door when you turn the handle is completely undisturbed because of those two pockets up in there. Brilliant. Last thing to do then is put the self-adhesive points on for like the edges of the trim. So I'm gonna make sure my handle's in and it operates correctly. And then I can peel the backing off this section. And I'm gonna make sure it's sort of tensioned, looking nice and smart. Boom. That's that side done. Door handle on, screwed in. And then there's two more at the back here. I'm gonna make sure I keep the tension on the fabric of the cargo bag. There you go, pull that one over there, that's nice and tight. I do the same for this one, make sure it's nice and tight here. Now what it looks like is there's an actual, there's another hole there. This must be a late versus early thing. Cool, so there might be a hole there for the early style door that you can just pop a screw into. Late style door, sorry. There you're gonna go, there we go. I'm gonna put the tension in there, stick that down. I think I've got two more poppers down here. Yeah, one there. Brilliant. So, what I've just realized as well is you don't have to necessarily get it right first time. You can stick your Velcro on the inside of the door and then what you can actually do is if you need to is just peel the velcro off and adjust the bag or adjust the tension on these parts here so you can keep a nice tensioned bag system and once you're happy with all of it and you've got your poppers all aligned if you're a bit anal like me get them all in there we've got a little rubber mallet Now I'm gonna to have to try and push these ones in with my thumbs, hang on. Ugh. Yep, cool. You can actually do it with your thumbs too. So there we go. We have a ton more storage in there. I don't have my phone on me, but if you need to, in fact, we've got Ali's phone. Thank you, Ali. There we go. 
it fits in a pocket. Brilliant. Keep it in there. And then when it comes to opening the door, what we'll do, we'll get a shot for you in a second. But when you open the door, there's plenty of room still in there. Oh, Mr. Popper. There's plenty of room still in there to make sure that it's not gonna rub on the side of the door as well. Brilliant, sliding door done. As a recap, whip off your old door card, remove any of the big insulation if you have it. Make sure to stuff it in the you know, extremities if you need to. Panel on, I started from the bottom, put the pins in, worked my way up, taking the self-adhesive backing off each one and then pressing them into place. And there we go, really neat door solution. Last panel then is the tailgate. And as you can see, it's a pretty big void. They've got some pretty big pockets on the back, but enough space in there so you can have, once again, a little bit sound deadening and insulation. And I'm sure there's some in here, which is gonna be interesting. So once again, same as the sliding door, using a trim tool, sorry, trim clip removal tool or trim tool. Remove all my poppers out of there nice gently. Oh yeah, we're full of insulation in there. You could do this with the tailgate closed, I guess. But all of this is a nice working area. So, old door card done. Don't need that anymore. Yeah, got the insulation in here. Oh, that's gone dark, isn't it? I must be getting something in there. Not as gummy as the last panel. But what I'll do is remove this. I reckon what we're getting in there is maybe some diesel. It's just the exhaust pipe. It must be sucking in through an old door sill. So there you go, that's something to remove before I go away. And it could be that hole in the tailgate as well. This is a temporary tailgate. Um, it's the best one I could find because my previous one was really bad as well. But this will be a wall hanging when I'm done with it. Because I love the sign work, the old Stranger Things, homage to Stranger Things that my man G did for me. Brilliant. So, point to note as well, I guess, is bearing in mind the pockets don't take up all of the doors, I could still stuff the extremities with a bit of sound deadening. So, in fact, I'll do that, for, oh, I'll do that once I've cleaned it up. I'll clean this area up, stuff sound deadening around the edges, not sound deadening, insulation around the edges, um, and then put the door in. But I'm just gonna clean the area now where that self-adhesive part is gonna stick to. There we go. And I'll bring you back when I'm done. So now the back door area is prepped, still got fluff all over my hands. Um, what I've done is replace the old uh, insula insulative um, fleece. I've stuffed that around the edges, so I'm still maintaining those door cavities, but all the gaps are fully filled in. Once again, I'm going to, or much in the same manner as the uh, sliding door, I'm going to lay out my first poppers from the top this time. I'll get one row in, or the top row in, mock up where my self-adhesive strip is going to go, peel the backing and stick it in. It's going to be that simple. They've been designed very well and that you can do this at home. In reality, it only takes like 10 minutes if that. and we like things that you can do at home. There we go then. Right, so I'm gonna be wanting to put those door cards in there. I'll do the zips up for the minute, just so I know I've got the location right. Oops, no, I won't forget that. Right, I know where I'm gonna put those. Peel the backing off. I'm gonna do both at the same time. One, two. And I'm gonna sort of hold the panel. Do you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm actually going to put the poppers in here as well, which means there's full tension all the way around. The pockets will be located in their correct place. But as before, if they are in a slightly, in the slight wrong location, it's not the end of the world because you can remove them from the Velcro backing and adjust the position if you need to. So yeah, not the end of the world. Brilliant. So that's in there. I'm now going to put my hands inside the pocket there, making sure the extremities are sort of spread out and literally press to fit. You could probably go over that with a roller if you really wanted to make sure that self-adhesive part is fully home. And make sure the bag's stretched out and stick it down. Simple as that. I'm gonna get my mallet wherever I put that. In fact, can I push these in with my thumbs? So give it a go. There we go. Perfect. No need to get the mallet out. All the clips are in the right orientation, in this case, horizontal. And there we go. Job done. That is in there. Absolutely brilliant. Another piece of kit that is going to be available soon is actually a cargo bag to fit on the back of a Westphalia cupboard. Now West Valley is a left-hand drive, as you know, so the cupboard will be on this side, and it's a bag much in a similar manner to this, with external pockets. It will be able to fit down here, and put things like breakdown kit, or whatever it might be. This instance, all my breakdown kit is in this cupboard. I'm actually gonna be removing this cupboard, actually. But one of the first things I thought of to maybe put in that bag is potentially my cable. Might be a bit of a bulky one. No, that's about a 30 meter cable, so that won't be going in there. But let's have a look. I've got some blue roll in there, which is good for breakdowns. And there you go. I've got some rubber gloves for if I'm doing any maintenance on the move. There we go. We've got some breakdown kit stuff in one side. Let's have a look on the inside. When the door's closed, we might be able to fit some extra bits in there too. Right, so with the tailgate closed and the bed in the down position, you can still see that these are accessible. Again, if you've got some bedding parts, maybe a spare blanket, maybe you can keep your gym jams in there, whatever it might be. The possibilities are endless. Really, really happy with the kit. Tailgate, sliding door, kick panel, and as well, there's gonna be another one for the back there. There may even be some new products by the time you've watched this video. What I'm gonna do is leave all the links down below to all of these products. I think they're fantastic. What do you reckon? Leave your comments down below. It'd be great to see them. Thanks again to Jed at Campervan Culture for supplying us with these bits of kit and allowing us to make a video for him. He's always been helpful and there will be some more uh, videos coming up in the future with some Campervan Culture gear. Um, if you like the video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe also. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Lee, this is Coombe Valley Campers, and these have been the T25 T3 Vanagon cargo bags for the interior of your van.